Hey YouTube, it's Matt. Today I'm going to be sharing about how I got interested in the field of geriatrics. And that's a story that really begins with my grandfather. So when I was young, my grandfather was one of the major male figures in my life. And while I was still in elementary school, he had a myocardial infarction and he ended up at Kukini for months. Uh, initially, he was very sick. Uh, he was in the intensive care unit, intubated, and when my family went to visit him, I always felt very helpless. You know, I literally felt like I was watching him breathe, and I wanted to do more for him. I wanted to fix him. I wanted to cure him, and that's actually what got me interested in medicine in the first place. So eventually, my grandfather got a little better. He was able to be extubated. He could sit up in bed. He could use one of his arms, but he could never speak again. He couldn't walk again. And he always looked like he was really miserable. Like he looked like he was in actual pain. And this was a huge change for my family. Uh, my grandfather was always a very jovial, uh, very funny uh, gentleman, and while he was in the hospital, I don't think I saw him smile once. And I think he realized at some point that he was never going to fully recover. And then one day, uh, when my grandmother was out getting some lunch, uh, my grandfather coded, and yeah, that time he died. And so, you know, it was this experience, uh, these sentiments, uh, that was what inspired me to pursue medicine in the first place. So many years later, I was being interviewed for medical school by a geriatrician. And she told me, oh, you know, I read your essay about your grandfather, and I wanted to know, have your opinions about that incident changed at all over the years? And I was like, hmm, no. Why do you ask? And she said, oh, well, there's something that I want to impress upon you. And it's that in medicine, and especially in my field, in geriatrics, we deal with a lot of chronic, incurable disease. You know, you wrote a lot about wanting to fix your grandfather, and, you know, sometimes that's not always possible. That said, one of the most meaningful, impactful things that you can do for a patient is to visit them in the hospital. It's very boring. It's very lonely here. And even if you couldn't see the difference that you were making, I'm sure it meant the world to your grandfather that you and your family were coming to visit on a regular basis. And in all honesty, it's probably more than anything that I could have offered to him medically. And, you know, looking back on things from the perspective of a physician, yeah, that's actually quite true. And so she continued, um, I want to encourage you to visit your friends, your family, and your patients in the hospital. And you know what? Um, that's something that made a huge impression on me. Um, again, I, I had applied to medical school being you know, caught up in you know, fixing people, curing people, and what I realized was the thing that stuck with me about my grandfather's story over all those years wasn't actually the fact that he died. It was the fact that he spent the last chapter of his life just completely miserable. And so it was at that point that I realized, you know, quality of life is something that's very important to me. And as I continued on in medical school, I realized that, you know, the geriatricians are actually very focused on quality of life. And say, you know, just to give you another personal experience, uh, when my grandmother on my mother's side of the family, uh, when she was getting older and you know, she had Alzheimer's, uh, she eventually went on home hospice and you know, her experience with end-of-life care was completely different than my grandfather's. Um, 
you know, when she passed away, um, I was actually there. I was at home with her, um, and my parents were there, and, you know, she was very comfortable. Um, she was surrounded by family, by loved ones, and, you know, I think that's what a lot of people want in their last days. And, you know, again, it was something that was just very eye-opening to me. Um, Dr. Daniel Fishberg from our pain and palliative care department, uh, he often says that, you know, in medical school we spend a lot of time learning how to fly the plane and you know, keep the plane flying, but we spend a disproportionately small amount of time learning how to land the plane smoothly. And if you think about that, you know, that's something that's very important. And, you know, at least I feel that's, you know, one of the most meaningful things that you can do in medicine. Um, if you can take the last chapter of someone's life and if you can make it comfortable, if you can make it dignified, then, you know, that is very powerful. And it's something that I'm very passionate about. And I hope that I can share that passion and that interest with you. Okay. Um, thank you for listening to that entire story. And yeah, see you next time.